Greetings and salutations, everyone. My name is Ryan of Neuroculture. Welcome to our continuing series of interviews we're going to be having with special guests uh, over the next couple of weeks. For this episode, we have fantasy sci-fi writer. He is current series, Conquerors of Guitarra, book number one, known as Forebodings, is out right now. Book number two is coming very soon. I'm going to introduce you to L.A. DePaulo. L.A., welcome to the show. How are you today? Hello, Ryan. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm uh, doing well and uh, very happy uh, to be here and uh, on your show and uh, I, I've watched uh, several of your own uh, other episodes and uh, I actually uh, like your dynamic, your team's dynamic. It's fun to watch and including uh, other episodes you had with um, uh, uh, Mortal Kombat uh, uh, designer Mixtron and uh, Dan Piscina, that uh, martial arts expert and actor. Yeah, so uh, I'm glad to be here. Excellent, excellent. Well, we're happy to have you. Welcome to Newer Culture. And uh, just to let the audience know, for those of you who are watching, we're going to save some time for your questions at the end, uh, towards the end of the show. So feel free to drop any questions you may have for our guest, L.A. DePaulo, in the comments below. I will be monitoring those as we go throughout the course of the day. So feel free to keep that in mind as we go along. So to kick things off, L.A., first question I have for you is, what would you say was your aha moment when everything clicked for you and that's when you made the decision to become a writer? Oh boy. Uh, well, the decision occurred uh, when, when, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a writer. And even through my high school years and such, I, I kept dreaming of becoming a writer on the side and always on the side because my main passion was always biology and science. But I always wanted to be able to write a book or something and, and so i did in different ways so but i i did not become a writer at that time uh and uh although in, in the intervening years i published a uh tropical fish magazine uh because so i'm from montreal and there were in the 90s there were no uh french language tropical fish magazines only american ones and uh and so I, I created it myself. And I guess, I suppose that's when I, I started writing for a purpose and, and started distributing them. And, yeah. And then, uh, but to become a uh, fiction writer, uh, that happened in you know, 2006 when uh, my kids were, uh, were still young and the oldest was around 12. And I wanted to write actually a story for them. That's how it started. But then I didn't have the time and they grew older. <laughs> and, I, and I realized, boy, I, can, I can't, cannot write a story for my kids anymore. It has to be an actual novel. And that's when the transition occurred. Around 2013, and I said, OK, laid out the plan and uh, for what it was going to become. And, and that's it. I see. All right. Well, that's that's great. You know, all things come in uh, due time eventually. So the next to follow that up with uh, the series you're doing right now was fantasy sci-fi your first choice, or did you think about potentially writing a book in another genre before taking on fantasy sci-fi? Hmm. No. Nope. Not at all. Not <laughs> it was fantasy yeah. sci-fi or nothing at all. <laughs> that's right. I'm. I'm my right and. and uh, I might write essays uh, about uh, the human condition and the uh, scientific topics uh, that, that interest me. Uh, I love evolution and uh, and w would write about that uh, if I if I find the opportunity. But uh, no, otherwise, in terms of fiction, this is what I wanted to do and all I see myself doing. Awesome, awesome. Now, do mm -hmm. you? Do you enjoy uh, reading other genres of books, whether they be mystery thriller or maybe even action adventure or maybe even noir novels? Oh, yes. Uh, boy. Yeah. In terms of reading variety, it's, it's mostly fiction, but all, all sorts. Uh, and uh, sci-fi, fantasy, uh, and actually uh, in the past year also uh, uh, thrillers. Uh, one, one of my good friends uh, has... Uh, some books that I really enjoyed, and it was the first time I read any uh, thriller and the detective type uh, stories. I uh, really enjoyed that. And then, um, 
there was uh, what else? I enjoy uh, biographies. Uh, that's I think one of my favorite genres, uh, not nonfiction, uh, because I always felt like I could learn from them, and uh, and so read uh, things like uh, uh, the biographies and autobiographies of uh, Theodore Roosevelt and uh, Winston Churchill and, and such. Uh, and fiction as well. There's a gentleman, uh, a gentleman in Moscow. I read that uh, recently. That that is an excellent book, uh, and it tells the story of uh, this gentleman who was part of the aristocracy in Russia uh, in, in the early 1900s, and with all the upheavals over there in Bolshevik War and so on. And then he gets stripped of all his uh, belongings, and eventually even of his title, and he was confined in prison within a hotel and he spent the rest of his life there meeting and seeing the world change through that. So that, that's a book I very much enjoy too. Yeah, so all, uh, I have not read, for, I have not read um, uh, horrors. Don't like that too much. I don't even like to watch, uh, well, I, I did watch Walking Dead, <laughs> but I don't know that I would enjoy reading the book. And uh, and even The Walking Dead, every time uh, you know it, it got to uh, to uh, grow, uh, yeah, uh, I would turn away my head. So that's not for me. Yeah, yeah, I can I can certainly understand that horror. I have a little bit of difficulty with that genre sometimes, whether it's the movies or the TV series. There's only so much, you know. There's only so much horror I can take. But that's right. uh, aside aside from that, going. A, taking a little bit of a step into the fantasy sci-fi uh, realm, what would you say are some of your favorite fantasy or sci-fi mm -hmm. movies or even TV series? Mm -hmm. Oh boy, yes, so there, 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 are, there are quite a few, but the things that have really mostly influenced me and, and that I've read and reread uh, many times, obviously there's uh, The Lord of the Rings, and, and even so, there are some people who don't, who don't like, I've met people who don't like The Lord of the Rings, and especially, uh, for instance, uh, the similar Silmarillion, and I just loved it. I loved the allegory in it, and uh, the and just the beautiful the, the beautiful words. Uh, and uh, aside from that, uh, the Wheel of Time and uh, Dune, uh, the Dune series, the and the prequels and the sequels. Uh, I bought them all, and then the same thing for. Um, uh, the Robots and Foundation uh, series by Asimov and, uh, and then Brandon Sanderson's uh, own uh, series, uh, uh, the Stormlight Archives, all sorts of things. And, and, it, and uh, in, in when I was younger, I uh, began with, uh, uh, what were they called? I have them here on my, uh, it's uh, the Dragonlance. <laughs> The Dragonlance series, that's right. That's where I, I, I became familiar with elves and, and I loved it. Mm. Uh, yes. Oh, wonderful. So, wonderful. Uh, yeah, in, ter in terms, and then also there's uh, obviously, um, if you're, you're familiar with her, uh, Ursula Le Guin, and uh, her books too are, are just fantastic. Uh, they're not all equally uh, uh, equally good, and and uh, it was strange to see because she changed form uh, between uh, the various books, and that was a nice experience too. Uh, but yeah, those are some of my favorite favorite series, and uh, and on TV, uh, well, there's uh, Doctor Who. I love uh, Doctor Who. Ah, you're a Whovian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. well, well, going with that, do you have a favorite? Who's your favorite doctor from Doctor Who? There's been so many over the years and decades, but if you oh, had to yeah. pick a favorite doctor, who's your favorite doctor? Boy, well, I don't know. There's I, I really loved Peter Capaldi, and uh, I don't know, I couldn't tell you which ones are my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the, the 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 emotions that they all bring into most of them, at least the later ones into uh, into the show, and uh, so I couldn't pick a favorite. Mm. All right, 
right, fair enough, fair enough. I know this is so many, doc- so many doctors to go around. <laughs> That's right. So many doctors to go around, so many different years, so many different decades. But moving, uh, but the uh, but moving into the next thing, mm-hmm. you have this series, Conquerors of Guitarra. So my question, uh, sur- the first question surrounding that is, how long did it take you to write the first book of that series with mm-hmm. forebodings? That took me uh, twelve years. That's right. Ten years plus two years of uh, proofreading, uh, revisions, and such. From 2006 to 2016, I finished the last paragraph, the last sentence of the last paragraph, then sent it off to uh, to uh, one of my sons, actually high school friends back then, uh, to uh, proofread, and then I uh, got a got additional re- uh, uh, feedback on uh, the drafts, and it took me two years. That's right to uh, to finalize it and publish it in February 2018. And but I already fortunately it's not it it's, didn't take me another twelve years to write the next which is uh, plan for release next month because I did learn a lot right uh, uh, during that period and uh, how to do it and I organized myself and such and uh, and so the next one will have taken me two years. Mm. All righty, all righty. Well, mm. with. Uh... With, uh, with going into the new book, but without getting into too many spoilers, can you let our viewers know what exactly is uh, the Conquerors of Guitar series and what they can expect to see in book number two? With- mm-hmm. So the Conquerors of Katara, uh, and uh, it's a story that actually, uh, as I explained earlier, it began, it was supposed to be just a story for my kids, uh, but set on a, a, some, a distant planet. And originally, the plant was not called Katara. The, its first name was Bizilong. <laughs> so uh, now it, it is not at all that anymore. It's a serious novel. Uh, and uh, But it, it is a novel about a people on this faraway planet 3,000 years in our future. And uh, note the hour, because uh, we will be involved. We are involved in the story. And so happening on this uh, faraway planet, and uh, because of the conditions of uh, the, uh, the ecological conditions and astronomical conditions of the planet over there within its system, it, it, it led to a world that feels very fantastical. And so the fantasy part of the story comes from uh, the events on that world and, and its peoples and its, and its creatures. And the... Uh, but it is not a purity fantasy novel. It's a sci-fi fantasy novel, and uh, the sci-fi part comes in it uh, through the magic, which is more science-based without making it a uh, you know boring, uh, de- descriptive uh, type of magic. Uh, but but it is, and I even did research on what. So the magic on Kadar is based on uh, the combination of. Uh, Micro, microbial cultures that these uh, powered women have on their bodies and inside their bodies and their genetics and and so you can see already the, the you know the scientific element there and then the sci-fi pure sci-fi comes from the fact that the uh, the antagonist the evil uh, god in, in the story is uh, one that David Katarns believe to be uh, their god one of their gods, and but who is actually uh, a, a leader of this future Earth of ours, and uh, intent on conquering uh, the planet for purposes uh, yet to be revealed. Mm. And so it is. Yeah, so it is a story about his people and the society, the incredible society that's been able to to create. Uh, and then their downfall when uh, this con- uh, when they are, where they are conquered, and then their uprising and return to prominence when they find a way to uh, well to well, what am I looking for uh, the word <laughs> when when they find a way to uh, throw kick out uh, well uh, the god. And uh, in turn, conquer the world themselves. And 
so I don't know if they, if they really uh, if people are are able to interpret it that way, but conquerors of Katara, uh, I intentionally use those words because you can read them both as the conquerors of those who will conquer the planet of Katara, as well as those, uh, the conquerors coming from Katara, originating from Katara. And so uh, it, it, it will be, the story will change once they get conquered and they rise up again, and they realize that they can actually help make things better for us too. All right. So yeah, so I don't know, this was a very long explanation. It's not a blurb at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, 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 that's okay. You know, I, we, hey, we open the door. We want to we wanna know mm -hmm. as much as we can without getting into too many spoilers, because I know you recently revealed the cover for book, right? book number two. It's going to be called First Eruption. If I remember correctly, from Conquerors of Katara, we're, we're, we're very excited to see where this story goes next. So it sounds like Conquerors of Katara has a mixture of a lot of different things. You have your you have your battles. You have characters who are struggling with who they are and what they're what they, what they could potentially become uh, moving mm -hmm. forward with this. Right within the story and see if, you know, if one, you know, perhaps some characters are going to accept their destiny. Others may turn their backs on it and go in a completely different direction. We mm -hmm. don't know. The only thing we do know is that based on the descriptions that, that we've heard from you about these books and the second one coming out very soon, these adventures sound really, really cool. They sound really, really uh, unique. And we're very excited to read them as uh, book number two comes out. Where, uh, where can people expect to see book number two? When, when is the big release date and where can they find it? So book number two uh, will uh, come out at the end of last week of September. And uh, you'll be able to find it uh, on uh, Amazon, basically uh, distributed through Amazon. Uh, but uh, not only here, uh, around uh, the, wherever Amazon uh, sells books. And uh, in print, it, it can also be found in print where libraries and bookstores uh, choose, to, uh, choose to stock it. <laughs> of course, of course. But we do, uh, we do mm -hmm. appreciate that. Look forward, and look forward to seeing where the series go. Now, I know it's still kind of early, and you've had book number one's been out for a while. You got book number two that's well, it's right around the corner. It's coming out. It's right around the corner. Mm -hmm. If an opportunity presented itself a few years from now, once you know, hopefully this pandemic comes to a close, we're able to get a lot of people back into work, and things are able to get back on track. Do you potentially see Conquerors of Guitara? not just as a book series, but maybe being adapted as, as a television series, maybe mm. a movie franchise? Is that something that you may want to explore somewhere down the line, or do you prefer to stay it as a book, as a book series? What are your thoughts well, on that? I've, uh, well, I've considered it uh, not seriously, uh, but uh, I have, and uh, a lot of people have told me you should. <laughs> so and I'm not opposed to it, uh, so long as uh, the story stays true to uh, obviously, as, as has happened with everything. When you turn something into a movie or TV series, that uh, they have to make adjustments and, and compromises, and authors have to make compromises uh, to fit within the hours and such. Uh, but no, I, I would uh, not be opposed uh, to uh, the idea, the opportunity, if it presented itself. But I have enough uh, enough material to keep going. In any case, uh, with all with all that uh, prequels and sequels, and uh, and even the the short stories in a way that I've written to present uh, the sci-fi part of the story by introducing this character from Earth uh, called Ronin, and uh, these I will continue to expand and and eventually uh, turn into their own uh, novellas or or. Uh, or novels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, with your reveal of the cover for the second, the second installment of this of this series, First Eruption, I gotta say, it's a pretty darn good looking cover, and I can mm, look. There's you. a part of me that there's a part of me that can see this as a Netflix series. I really can because fantasy sci-fi. There are a few things out there, but not as many. And some mm -hmm. of your ideas are more uh, unique, and some of the characters that you've put together are really are really nice to explore their journeys and see where they could go, where they may have come from, and all that. So there's a lot of there's a lot of ways you can go with this. It's a big sandbox that one oh, can yes, play. Oh yeah, it is. It is, but, and uh, yeah. a lot of the characters are going to evolve uh, in uh, book two over here, 
and and then uh, even more so in book three, which book three should come uh, in about six months, four to six months. And because it's already written, actually, what is going to be published next month was supposed, uh, I was not supposed to publish next month, uh, would have been a few months down the line uh, as one entire book. This book three was part of book. So I had decided to split book two into books two and three. <laughs> so because it, it was it was too large and uh, and uh, and I still had some loose ends to tie up in the later chapters and I didn't want to have to wait uh, too long to release uh, the another part of the story. Uh, I had it actually uh, asked my uh, writer friends uh, from the uh, Philadelphia Writer Circle, you know, if they thought it would be a good idea to release just release a, a chapter a month or a chapter a week. And uh, and just give it away like that. No, 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 no you can't do that. And so finally, uh, 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 several of them said, "Well, you know, there's a really good point where you could split it." And uh, this well was book two, and so I did. And, and now uh, there's book two and book three coming uh, just a few months down the road. So that so that will be nice. And and, um, and already uh, thinking about uh, the continuation of the shorts as well. And obviously, uh, I'm going to have to start writing uh, what will be book four and, uh, of, of the story. So the, the, entire, the entire going forward story uh, should, should be complete uh, uh, with book five, now that I split this one in two. All right, all right. Long road mm -hmm. ahead of us. A lot of adventures coming our way in the, uh, in the future, for sure. Now, if you were given... Uh, if you say you're you're in Hollywood, you have a Hollywood uh, you know casting director's hat on. If you were going to cast this series, whether it be animated or otherwise, do you have any actors or potential actresses in mind who you would want to play certain characters within your series of movies or TV se or TV shows? Hmm. Who's who's that actor that? Uh, uh... If you know him, he played one of uh, the the emperor. Was it the emperor in uh, in Gladiator? Oh, uh, Joaquin was it Joaquin Phoenix? Yes, that's right. Yeah, he recently. You mean you mean the actor who recently played the Joker just last year? That's that, right. Uh, well, that too, that's right. Yes. So, <laughs> so you would you would want Joaquin Phoenix to play which character? I think I would have him play Taurus. Ooh. Mm hmm. Because very troubled mind, uh, tr well, troubled in a, in a sense, right? And uncertain about himself and, and emotionally made perhaps not too mature. And with a lot of uh, space for growth and understanding, yes. And, and uh, a lot of pent up energy and, and uh, impulsiveness. I think I would have, uh, yes, I would have. Uh, Wow, that's a good that's a that's a good good first pick. Any other uh, actors or actresses that come to your mind to portray other characters? Mm. What's his name? Uh, the uh, the one. <laughs> yeah, the actor who played one of the uh, uh, just because of his look. Um, in uh, I think I didn't watch the entire uh, show uh, Game of Thrones, but uh, there is one of the the. Uh, he becomes an advisor eventually. He uh, this. Uh, uh, oh boy, this is my thing. I have not seen everything of Game of Thrones. I've only seen you either promos okay. or bits and pieces. So if anybody knows which character or which uh, actor that our guest uh, LA is yeah, talking about, a merchant and so on, and he's always uh, in, in the corner and giving advising everybody, even though oh. they're not asking for his advice. And oh the um oh gosh, this is gonna kill me. This is gonna, this is gonna get, I wish I, I mean I've seen so many movies and TV series that have featured some of these actors, but it, but you're referring to the to the um, the the uh, the small person actor who's the advisor to the king or whatever it is. Is that who you're referring to? The small person actor? No, no, he's quite tall and. and oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Right. Let's see. We have to do somebody. Yeah, if anyone knows in the comments, uh, let yeah. us know. It could be just throw out some names of uh, certain actors and people who yes. portray characters on Game of Thrones. Not, I know uh, there's there's Sophie I'll Turner. There's um, oh gosh, the person who played Jon Snow. I oh no, he has a so he has a really short hair, kind of grayish. 
and he he looks really oh. neat. And oh uh, man, this is gonna kill me. Yeah, if anyone knows, put it uh, in the uh, comments. We do appreciate. It. Uh, someone is saying uh, the character who played what is it, Littlefinger? That's uh, it. <laughs> okay, who's okay, Reyna? Who's the actor who plays Littlefinger? Because I don't know who it is off the top of my head. I have not seen Game of Thrones. All I know is that it's a show where a lot of people die. So <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> But I have not seen the show. Uh, yes, yes, the actor who plays Littlefinger, Reyna. If you know who it is, uh, let us know in the comments as we're going along. But um, any other a a actors or actresses to portray other characters as we're trying to figure out that previous one? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, no. I can't think of others at the moment. Uh, that's okay. I, I, mean, I know yeah, I'm kind of putting you on the spot. No, no, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Just thought yeah. I'd pose the if I think of it. If I think yeah. of it. Okay, I'll fair enough, know. fair enough. Mm -hmm. All good. If, yeah, if anyone knows in the chat uh, about the... <laughs> Natalie Geo Portman. Oh, People you want Natalie, Natalie Portman, Portman to play a character? Mm hmm And who would Natalie Portman be playing? I think I would ever play Layala, Lux Bayula, who was, mm. was only in one single scene in Forebodings, but she is going to become... She, uh, Layala will replace Taurus's Primus, his first officer, and uh, uh, yes. And, oh, that's, uh, a good, that's a good. By the way, the actor's name that you were trying to think, we were trying to think of earlier was Aiden Gill, uh, Aiden Gillen, Aiden Gillen. That's it. Yeah, he's, <laughs> Thank a, really, he's you, a good actor. Uh, mm -hmm. He is a good actor. So yeah, that was that was the uh, person you were trying to think of. Now, who would uh, again? Who would Aiden Gillen be playing? The one you were trying to refer to earlier. Lusk Mithrim. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So you have you have you have Joaquin Phoenix, Aiden Gillen, Allie Portman. Anyone else you would like to cast in this wonderful series of adventures <laughs> for uh, Conquerors of Guitar? Anyone else you want to throw out there? Mm, no, not at the moment. All good. Yeah. Hey, the three, three, three big three. names is a pretty darn good start. If I do yeah. say, if I do say so myself, uh, for mm -hmm. that. But we look forward to uh, seeing what happens with your series of books. If this ever gets adapted into a series, uh, you know, episodes for a TV series, excuse me, or a franchise, becomes a movie mm -hmm. franchise, I should say. Wish you the best of luck with that. Some bonus questions uh, for you. you. And, and, and those bonus questions start off with this. What would you say is your favorite gadget? Mm. My favorite gadget is my fountain pen, I think. <laughs> 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 well, you know. right. well, because it is sleek, it writes beautifully, and it is adapted to only the writer. I don't know if you've heard about that, but uh, you should not share fountain pens because they get formed. The tips get formed uh, to uh, to the pressure of the hand that's using it, and uh, and, and so sharing it may damage it. Hmm. So, uh, so my fountain pen made uniquely for yes. That's my favorite gadget. Interesting, interest, interesting. Now, a little bit uh, with that. What would you say is uh, a piece, or what technology do you wish existed? Oh boy, that's an easy one. I wish there were a device that could read my mind, so that it could put all the words on paper. Well, not on paper anymore. Now uh, on the computer <laughs> for me. <laughs> Because I found that, uh, and that's actually something that I that I uh, put into one of uh, the short stories for Ronin. I find that even though I can put words on paper, it, it is very difficult. Or I can, you know, you can see stories in your mind and, and uh, you can dream things and beautiful dreams, but then translating them into this other medium over here. Uh, now zeros and ones, uh, and so words on, on a electronic document or even on paper doesn't happen easily. I mean, at least not for me. And so, yes, I, w I wish there were a device that could extract the stories from my mind and put it. And then all I have to do is edit and revise, and that's right. Hmm. All righty, I got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. I got gotcha. you. Now. If you could send a, a message to the entire world, what would you say in 30 seconds? To the entire world at the moment. Yeah, I mean, if, if, you, if say, you could send a message yeah. and you only have 30 seconds to present it, what would you say? 
I would say tolle lege, which is Latin for take and read. It's the it's what the way for all of us to grow and in whichever direction we need to grow and know how to be and uh, and, and that's it. It can only do good. So mm. I'd say tolle lege, take and read. All right. Mm -hmm. I like I like that I like that. That's uh, <laughs> short. It's not even thirty seconds, ladies and gentlemen. It's short, no, so right. to the point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, it 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 was uh, it was on uh, that tropical fish uh, magazine that I used to uh, that I used to publish uh, in my twenties, and uh, it was the model model for the magazine here. Can I show it? Sure. Yes. If you if you yeah sure if you want to absolutely. What do we have here? We were called. L'Aquario, the Aquario, ah. and and I, I even did the drawings and the cartoons in it. Uh, over here, the cartoon, and, and maybe you can tell what's happening over here. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, the fi the fish uh, is uh, digging up holes in the tank, and then uh, of course the owner is getting upset, and he's putting it all the put the gravel back where it belongs, and and then. The fish gets upset too because now his girlfriend is saying, "Well, you know what's up over here? <laughs> when are we going to be able to uh, to mate and and have some?" That's right. I you see. To our uh, next generation of fish. All right. All right. But the human being doesn't understand that, and so he's got to put the gravel back. And... So yeah, dolle mm. lega. I used to do. Uh, I I love. I guess arts in general and that's why even for uh you know uh, my series of that, uh, and then working with my narrator uh who said you know in uh, forebodings there's only a quatrain of the, that song that Lux Mithrim is singing when he's doing the test when the Lux Bayou they are testing him for his uh to make sure that he that there's nothing in affairs with him and uh and that he can become a healer approved by uh, the order and so he sings this song uh, just to go in uh, med meditative state and for the Lux Bayula to find him by looking for that song in the mind what's called the mind and uh and so the narr my narrator said uh, adam watson uh, he has a wonderful voice i don't know if uh, you've heard uh, some of the snippets on uh, my website he's a british gentleman who lives in uh, oregon now and uh, so anyways, he said, you know, can you finish this song? And, and I did. And uh, and so he put it all to music. It's four minutes, 30 seconds long. And uh, with all of the, uh, not all of the, but with the illustrations also uh, uh, drawn by Michele Parisi, a young Italian artist uh, who also uh, I engaged and who continues to do all the illustrations for the book, uh, the books. And uh, yeah, so I just lo love art in general and whatever I can do and add to the story to make it more real, uh, I'm trying to do uh, to have a greater impact auditory and visual. And... Absolutely, absolutely. And we wish you the best of luck with your series that's uh, ongoing with Conquerors of Katara. Uh, that is actually going to wrap things up here. But before we do, uh, LA, where can the good people uh, find you online and uh, find out all the other projects that you're going to be working on? You can go to ladipaolo.net and uh, you'll find uh, the information on uh, on uh, the book, on the story, on the, the shorts as well, and uh, the, the characters uh, and uh, the drawings. Uh, the, they're all the illustrations, all of that. And that's where you can go in from there. There'll be links to uh, Amazon if uh, you can't find it on Amazon. Uh, but you should be able to. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, we want to take this opportunity to thank our guest, L.A. DePaulo, for being with us today. Our continuing series of interviews right here on Neuroculture. Check out his series, Conquerors of Katara, Forebodings. Book one is out right now. Book number two, First Eruption, is coming your way at the end of next month in September. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned for that. Don't miss it. In the meantime, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at RyanRPM5. 
Check out the rest of our videos on our YouTube channel at Neuroculture, and make sure you're following us on all forms of social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, at It's Neuroculture. Thank you very much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your right. day. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we will see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Ryan. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody.